घर नहीं तोड़ा करते pleasure to welcome someone who is a renowned name in Bengali cinema and now in Hindi he has created such a wonderful sensation uh with Rocky or Rani ki prem kahani that is of course Rata Rai Chaudhary sir so so thank you so much for joining me on filmishilmi.com and it's a huge congratulations on the film's success so far and thank you anuj for uh, inviting me to the to the interview uh the feeling is something which is if i may say it's a cliche it's kind of an out of body experience honestly i have never never ever experienced this kind of adulation ever and uh, of course this the whole credit goes to karan sir mr karan johar he had conceived this role in such a way and portrayed it so sensitively that uh, i believe it's one of the highest point even though i would like to uh, believe that i have a lot more years left as an actor but i think this is possibly the highest point of my career when some when a character within the first two days in the first 48 hours of the release i've gotten so much love and more importantly i've gotten so many messages where a lot of uh, performing artists male performing artists who had been uh, discriminated or have been trolled when they were starting out uh, they have reached out to me saying that thank you for putting our thoughts our pain and the kind of problems that we face on screen they could empathize with you that that is uh, and continues to be most important uh, portion of this film for me right and you know dota sir i feel the story of uh, john don is actually mine in many ways because i remember growing up whenever i used to like dancing i actually as a matter of fact used to love dancing to dola de dola when i was young um and i remember you know log bolte nahi the samne se but pata chalta tha ki wo mere bare mein baat kar rahe the and you know they would kind of look down upon me just because you know dancing is not manly enough uh and you know it's a taint on masculinity and i think what your role does and i think that whole sequence with you and ranvi dancing to dora e dora it's a revolt against that and i think it was so beautifully done and i think with durga ma's you know and durga ma's pandal as well it gives it that whole essence of god watching i mean i would like to know your perspective about about this whole uh society's cliched version of masculinity and this whole uh you know machismo that we've kind of always grown up hearing about was there ever a time in your life where you've also had to face anything like that especially because you were in the performing arts uh because uh, i'm from a business uh, family me getting into the arts was in itself a problem for many of my family members e- extended family we had a joint family at one point of time So of course they never address that in front of me but behind my back they used to say that he's wasting his life he's gone to a field which has got no future and what's he doing stuff like that and uh i believe it actually is fear it's not much is no you know that fear that somebody's breaking out and doing something after their own heart instead of trying to follow that path that the society has created yeah and so that other people are not uh, influenced by this guy who's trying to break out let's just subjugate him let's just pull him down any which way we can so i think it's not machismo it's fear and it's that fear that has been manifesting through people being downright nasty with performing artists like you faced i have faced to some extent and a lot of uh, especially uh, male artists who had gone for uh, traditional art forms be it uh, the indian dance forms like kathak kuchipudi odissi bharatnatyam or uh, in the field of fashion designing makeup because uh, of the kind of work that i do i meet people often and when we discuss our uh, the point where we started out i get to feel a lot of pain that they tell me about i understand their pain and then actually i when i anal- analyzed why people are 
normally sane people, normally nice people, so uh, torturous, so nasty, so mean. It's because of their fear. And now I feel that, and now that there's a bunch of us who've just followed our own hearts and done well. It's not that we have wasted our life, we have just uh, submerged our life in the river. We've done well with our lives. It's a big slap to those people. It's a collective slap from all our side. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's it's the wheel of karma that spins, right? That turns. So I think that's that's what it is. But uh, you're a martial arts expert. Uh, but I think the way you were dancing um, in 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 the film, I mean, it's so wonderful as well that we have icons in non Hindi as well. I mean, of course, now you kind of joined that league a little bit by exploring Kathak uh, on the main screen. But we also have Kamal Hassan sir, who is an icon when it comes to. Uh, classical dancing. I mean, to watching him is just an extraordinary experience. Uh, but I think for you to get that flair, uh, because it's a lot of fun, you know, when you're doing classical dancing, kar rahe hote ho, to what really uh, helped you to bring that sense of flair and not make it seem very action-packed, you know, <laughs> when you were dancing on stage and when you were dancing in the film? Anuj, uh, my idea of uh, being an actor is my main my duty as an actor is to fulfill my director's vision. So when I'm on board, I try to understand what my director wants me to do. So when I had this uh, a character briefing from Karan sir, and I realized that I simply have to forget and unlearn a lot of things that I've been doing and relearn what he wants me to do, to understand the character better. So of course, the first thing that I did was not just learn the dance for, but learn the mindset from where my teachers are coming. I had all female teachers, be it uh, Paramita Moitro in Calcutta, who's given me the basic training in Qatar, or to Nikita, Banwal, Nikita Banwalika in Mumbai, from Mumbai. And of course, our choreographer, Vaibhavi Merchant. They all are Kathak exponents, and I try to imbibe their body language first. Their hand movements, their body language, their... And now, again, this will sound like a cliche, but I try to get in touch with my feminine side. So, uh, I, I really wanted the Kathak. See, Kathak is our, our art form. It's our heritage. And I didn't want to demean it by any which way possible. Not because of me, not on my own, not on my account. I won't. So, that I was very particular about. And because you asked me this question, yes, I had to unlearn a lot of things. Firstly, I had to let go of my posture, the way I walk. When I'm doing Kathak, I uh, purposefully kept a couple of body language. One, when Chandon was not performing. Mm. He's his normal self. The other one was when he was on stage. Because I've met a lot of performing artists. They have this on-stage persona, which only comes out once they put on the makeup and the costume and get into the mindset. Those same people, those same people, when you see them without, well, out of the stage or in their normal lives, they are different people altogether. So I tried to imbibe that and keep it. But yes, the, uh, what I wanted to do was, the, to, was to get the body language right. Because I realized that if I don't get the body language right, Chondun will, will cease to be a character and become a caricature. Hmm. But I would like to know about your perspective on on balancing social messaging with, uh, you know, commercial cinema. Because I think even in Hindi, I mean, in Bengali, you have a rich legacy of of films. Uh, firstly, I think when it comes to uh, Satyajit Ray's Feluda representations as well. But in Hindi, you've done, I think, what, Kahani 2. Uh, you've done Helicopter Ila, uh, which, again, are mainstream films which address so many issues as well. So how important is it, I think, for Indian cinema generally to kind of go through this phase? Anuj, I believe uh, the best way to educate is through entertainment. Because uh, this is my personal belief, and I think that for us, for Indians, cinema is primarily a source of entertainment. And if I can't entertain my audience, they will simply not watch what I have to offer, most of us. So to get them to the theatres, 
we'll have to do it through entertainment. And then we can put out what we want to say through that guise of entertainment. You have to have entertainment first. Otherwise, my message will be, be lost. There have been more uh, powerful messages through uh, other films as well, but people simply haven't watched those. There have been some fantastic parallel uh, or art house cinema, which had very strong messages, but not many people watched it. The mass didn't watch it. So I believe what Karan sir did was extraordinary. He brought in the audience, promising them entertainment and also told them about what he felt. So I think that is very important. So I believe that it's not just the duty of the cerebral filmmakers, but also the duty of uh, mainstream filmmakers. Yes, to give out messages, but through entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's interesting we're speaking about stereotypes and shattering that. I swear with a lot of friends of mine who are Bengali. Um, and I think some of them were a little bit... Uh, hesitant in accepting the authenticity of the Bengali culture like I think what they found it was very Bollywoodized um obviously like through the cinema like for the film and but I think having actors like yourself really kind of uh in a way was satisfying to watch because you know we're seeing in that sense an authentic voice being presented through that character because you know you yourself are Bengali but there was I think a lot of people did have a little a few um, points to make about the authenticity of the representation of the Bengali culture. But I mean, Toras, I just, I wanted to get your opinion about the way Hindi cinema for a while, and I don't mean Rocky Rani, I'm just saying generally, for a while has kind of, um, you know, in a way caricaturized, you know, different languages, different kind of um, dialects and regions of, of, of India, whether it is like the, you know, a Punjabi person being a truck driver, you know, bracketed to that or like a South Indian being a loud character that you know there's, there's, these stereotypes have existed um how authentic did you find in an honest way Rocky Orani in terms of the Bengali culture and secondly do you think now because Indian cinema and we're proud as Indians now and embracing ourselves do you think now it's high time that we've moved away from these caricatures especially when it comes to cultures and accents and dialects and all that. Okay. So uh, you have several questions, one question. So I will uh, answer one by one. Sure. So about the authenticity part. Now, when we make, when uh, a director makes a cinema, it's his version. He's not making a documentary. He's just making a cinema. It's making a film. He's trying to put across his vision. And sometimes... He has a certain understanding and he wants to portray somebody in a certain way. Uh, so I really wouldn't say that one has to be extremely authentic in the way that uh, uh, a character is portrayed. Yes, authenticity is important, but not to the extent that it has to conform to people's, uh, I, uh, people's views or ideals about it. I didn't find anything uh, which was objectionable in the portrayal of either the Punjabi family or the Bengali family. It is a world that Karan sir creates. And in his world, his characters are like what he's presented. Hmm. Again, if I want to find authenticity, I will either watch a documentary or a very art house cinema. Now, here we are primarily going there for entertainment. Hmm. Now, coming back to caricaturizing characters uh, uh, from different regions and their dialects and their language, Earlier, this was seen, this seemed to be funny to people. But I believe that in the last few years, this is reducing the new, uh, the new uh, set of audience or even the old ones who are coming back to the theatres now that they have seen, especially during the lockdown, a whole lot of films from a whole lot of regions. Their mindsets have changed. Mm. And I believe permanently so. Now, and also the point that people are extremely touchy about such things. So if there's caricaturizing of any culture or any region, I don't think that film is going to do well any, not just for, uh, in that region, but people from other regions as well will start, will stop watching those kind of films. That is happening rapidly. Yes, it has happened and it's not funny at all, but people got away with a lot of things in the 90s and the 80s, even hmm. in the noughties. 
a whole lot of things. Today, it's mm. extremely offensive to see those. But with this, uh, with the present kind of mindset, I believe that let the past be the past. Yes, we all have made mistakes. Let's start afresh. And yes, uh, I think with this film, what we've tried to achieve and uh, achieve to a certain extent is that people are aware of how uh, 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 that people can be sensitive about one's culture. So let's okay. not try to pull down people through their cultures or through their tastes or through their, uh, through their dressing. In fact, you see, Karan sir, being a Punjabi himself, has really uh, lifted the Bengali community a little more than the Punjabi community. He kept all his the woke people in the Bengali community. Hmm. It's not it, because he's extremely generous in that way, and he's like he's not that he doesn't have a a sense of regionalism, if I may call it. That okay, since I'm a Punjabi, I will show the Punjabi in a better light. He, he made all the jokes on uh, on behalf of the Punjabis. So he's, uh, that way he's very broad-minded. And uh, yes, uh, taking things forward, I don't think, as you've said, I don't think people are going to tolerate these kind of uh, caricatures anymore. Mm. And also, it's interesting, we're talking about the changes from the 90s to now. I mean, if you look at Dilwale Dilhan Nere uh, and the representation of Bauji then, uh, versus you being the father of Rani. Um, I mean, what an involvement of characters we've seen. Um, I, I, I think it's so wonderful because even if we look at the dynamics that Rani has with her father, uh, it's not one that is of a typical dominating, you know, father. It's one who is compassionate, empathetic, and is there for her and as a friend. Um. Again, uh, just to get your perspective on that in terms of deconstructing that whole notion of machismo that's been built in our society, how pivotal is it for uh, Indian films to really showcase um, parenting uh, in a very in a very humble light, in a very empathetic light rather than one being one of domination and ruling over? I don't uh, see... Uh... I have uh, seen three uh, distinct relationships with fathers and siblings over three generations. One was with my between my father and my grandfather. My father always referred and uh, addressed my grandfather in up, up me, always, and he always spoke to him with his head down. And my grandfather, my grandfather, although he loved my father, always looked not directly at him but on some somewhere else. It's like almost that the sense of being a man is not being not showing their affection for each other. I have I don't think my father has ever given a hug to my grandfather. And my grandfather probably stopped hugging my father after he's turned what eight or nine. Now my father was a little more open with me. He was, he tried to be my friend, but again, he couldn't be as friendly as he tried to be. Now, I have a daughter and she is like, she lords over me. She is in a, she's a teenager. She lords over me. She can tell me anything. And it's just not us in our family. It's the society at large in, in the neighborhood that I live in, in the current uh, uh, cultural scenario that we are living in. So there have been changes over the years. So my uh, my grandfather was in his uh, 20s during the between 40s and 50s. My father was in his 20s between um, the 60s and the 70s. I was in my 20s between um, uh, between the 90s and the noughties. Mm. So yeah, so the changes, the winds of change have all affected us. So now you're talking about Bauji. You know, Bauji probably was from the pre. Probably not. He, he was from the previous generation of very strict Punjabis living in Britain at that point of time. You know how Britain was. I'm sure you know. Yeah. So, he, yeah. So he had this. I'm an. Uh, I'm an NRI. I'm an out here trying to make my fortune, trying to raise a family, and that strictness was always there. But now, Chondum, in being a today's uh, father, 
sometimes we look up to our daughters or our sons as well in this generation my generation they are more friends we can discuss things on a man to man basis man to woman basis saying that do you have any advice for me this is something which is a huge change i don't i i never have forget about my grandfather and father i've never uh, my father never asked me for my advice or my take on things hmm. he would probably ask my mother now what does he think of what does tota think of this or what's he saying he will not ask me directly me i'll ask my daughter directly what do you think of this do you think i'm wrong do i think do you think i'm right so this change this has been for our kind of people for people of let's say my strata of people this change is now universal maybe there are pockets where this change is not permeated but overall yes anush i think this change has already affected us and i think the mother dynamic was so beautiful i think between germany and chandon i think that was so beautiful um, i i mean you know it was very relatable i think again for me because that's the sort of bond that i had with my mom as well who kind of you know even though she kind of sometimes you know society ki baatein used to affect her a lot as well at one point but you know we have that dynamic where you know she would be there as a compassionate person i mean for you when you were playing that role did you ever reflect on your relationship with your mom as well and was it also like quite a secure one too yes always because thank god for our mothers yeah. especially as indians thank god for our mothers our mothers have always been our biggest support system and mine of course has been i could go up to my mother anytime and unload and she would just you know touch my head and say job theek ho jayega sab theek ho jayega don't worry and those words were more than enough and of course till even today my mother is one of my best friends just i just took that thing and i just had to have that feeling it's and Uh, you know get it on we get it in chandon you know just teleport it to chandon and i have the same kind of relation with my mother that chandon had with jamini and jamini had an affair with chandon knew and he preferred that because he knew that chandon knew that his father was an abusive person but the mother of course the mother deserved happiness so chandon if you see when rani relates uh, uh, at the dinner table that uh, somebody had come to our uh, mm. office we're talking about a kamal loan and all of a sudden shabana ji jamini stops midway and i gave a knowing look to him so chandon knew about this so this is the kind of you know, many people have missed that but this is a kind of relation matured and evolved relation that chandon had with jamini an indian male probably will not take very lightly that his mom is probably had an affair with somebody else but chandon knew that jamini was the whole, whole of her life she was uh, she had an abusive uh, husband she never got a day of happiness and she deserved those seven days or 10 days or that one month of happiness that she had and if you remember the year that uh, jamini talks about 76 77 yeah. shanda uh-huh. probably chandon was what 7 years 10 years old of course she didn't tell him then she told him later on and he understood so that thanks to karan sir for that mature and very evolved and so ahead of his times portrayal but the small things these are the small things which make chandon and jamini special and the bond special Wow, I mean that was so beautiful. It was so poetic, and again another dynamic which I think again which is so fresh for Hindi cinema. And I mentioned this earlier in our interview is that son-in-law relationship, son-in-law bond that he has with Rocky in the film. I mean that whole Dora de Dola sequence. I mean, Dora sir, can you please talk to me about that? Because you see, when you're performing a song like that, which is so iconic in Hindi cinemas. legacy um you know it, it 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 it's tough to do and to completely give it this beautiful take about revolution about uh you know uh one's reality and 
you know, saying ke ha, main jo hu, wo hu. I mean, I think it was so powerful. Please talk to me about that sequence and how it was shot. I would love to know. See, for me, the subtext was this, that uh, the actual subtext was this, that it's Karansa's rebellion, which he didn't tell me about at that point of time. Because he knew that had he talked about that, I would probably try to emulate him, copy his movements. As an actor, we tend to do that. But he didn't tell me that. He told he told this to the world after five days of, it, of the film's release. So the, actually, that was the subtext, that Karansa used to dance it was okay with Yash Sahab, Karan Sir's father. But when he did that in college, people laughed at him. And that hurt, that pain, is what he put into Chondo. That's what he said in an interview just three days back. For me, the subtext was that, that we see, uh, I think uh, the Indian father who has a daughter will always want the son-in-law to be a son. You know? So for... That, that hug between Rocky and uh, Chondur after there are meltdown, respective meltdowns, it's when Chondur allows a complete stranger to hug him. Because initially when Rocky tried to hug Chondur, he was repulsed. He said, nee, 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 nee. no, I don't want your hug. Mm. He allows him because that is the point when Chondur accepts Rocky as one of his own. He stops being the daughter's boyfriend and starts being Chondun's son that he's going to have. And then for me, the subtext again was that probably Rani wasn't interested in Katha because we never see her performing Katha. But Rocky was. So he said, okay, let me prepare Rocky. Let both of us dance. Let, let, let him understand what I go through. The joy, not the humiliation, the joy that I go through in the place which is very safe to me, which is the stage of our Durga Puja pandal. Because I have been performing my dance here and people have accepted me. Let me invite Rocky and show our Bengali community that, look, here's one guy who also can enjoy the dance that you all do. So this was my subtext. And when we dance, it's... It's more about joy. It's not about sending a message. When Rocky dances in front of uh, the whole crowd for once without having any fear of his parents, he knew his parents would be there. Mm. The first time he was cowering when he was dancing at the, uh, the gathering of the Punjabi, mm. uh, Punjabi of the Year Award. Mm. But the second time, even though he knew that his parents would be there, it was more a rebellion on his part. That, look, I am Rocky Randava. I never... I could never dance in front of you. I could never raise my voice in front of you. Today, I'm dancing in front of you. And in a form that you all ridiculed. It was Rocky's rebellion. More than Chondun's message. That's how I feel. Hmm. And two men dancing in front of Ma Durga. We being her creations. We, we being her, her sons. And dancing in front of my mother, the Devi Ma. We both men are dancing from diverse culture converging to one. That for me is the brilliance of Karan Sir. Karan Sir. It was, That's how he beautifully done. You know, it was such a beautiful ode to our culture because in Hinduism, it, that's, you know, singing and dancing is an integral part of it, really. You know, yes. chahe ab, you know, funerals mein jao, chahe ab celebrations mein jao. Gana or dancing, hum, it's like within the fabrics of our culture and growing up, you know, especially in our faith as well. But, you know, I think um, it's very interesting because, I mean, it's just a bit on the filmmaking side, actually, which I know it might be a bit difficult for you to comment on. But it's quite interesting as well, because I think when Bansali had shot that More Pia song in Devdas, uh, he, I think, had imagined it in a way where if his mother was humiliated, how 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 the people would react, you know. And it's interesting, again, how both Karan, because Karan has paid tribute to Bansali in this film. He's mentioned it many times. Um, it's interesting how humiliation has been again a very interesting factor between both of them that they've used and in you know introspected on to bring that essence out. Um, but Tota, so when you as an actor again, you know, I know we spoke a lot about your personal life and how you've used that as a way to kind of help you. But job humiliation ki baat aati hai. Um, I'm sure it, in many times in life you probably faced that. 
how do you identify or how are you able to relate with that idea of humiliation? Perhaps not in the context of Chandon's character, but it's generally. Any performing artist will face that humiliation at some stage or the other. All of us face it. When we are trying to get work, we are trying to place ourselves out there. It starts from the family when we announce that we want to be artists. Then we go out trying to learn the craft. Once we learn the craft, we go out trying to get work. So that process and getting work, even getting even after getting success, when our times are not good, when it's a little, we hit the lows, we are humiliated. Humiliation is a part and parcel of every artist. At some point or the other, we are all have faced it. Some more than the others. So I can I can understand that humiliation is a very powerful motivator. Mm -hmm. you know, once you're humiliated, you want to say that, no, I will want to tell them what I feel. That wanting to tell them what one feels is a very powerful motivation. From Bhansali sir to Karam sir, they have used that. Instead of wallowing in self-pity, instead of complaining, they said, fine, let me put it across. Let me show. Let me make something. Let me put across my view to people and tell them that, no, it's not okay to be condescending. It's not okay to be to be little people. Mm. So uh, I think humiliation is, uh, for me, it has worked wonders because I take a lot of energy from humiliation. I say, okay, you have humiliated me today. Let me just prepare myself to give you that answer that no, your words cannot put me down. Your actions cannot put me. I will bounce back. I will. And I will put my message across. So that I see humiliation in this light. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. No, I think that's really powerful and empowering. Thank you for sharing that. I think on a final note, also, because I do understand that you've got a few errands to run. Um, you know, Rocky Rani, like we said, has really brought social messaging to the forefront in terms of massive, huge canvas Hindi film blockbuster. I think for you going forward, uh, in whether it's Hindi or Bengali or Indian cinema, any type of acting role, what sort of characters would you like to play? I think having done Chandon in Rocky or Rani, and another part of the question, sorry, two parts, um, is, you know, having done a film like this, which obviously does bring that Bengali flavour and, you know, addresses it a lot more. Uh, how do you hope to tell more Bengali stories in mainstream cinema as well? Uh, honestly, Anu, should we, as an actor, I really can't plan anything. I've tried planning for my career. You know, they say that if you want to make God or God's laugh, tell them about your plans. So I've tried that. It doesn't work out. In the film industry, the industry plans for you. You cannot plan for the industry. So I just go with the divine flow. I know that the Almighty has something in store for me. I just need to be loose and easy, keep my uh, be broad-minded enough and keep my options open and things will happen. This happened out of the blue. I never thought ever that I'll get to work with Karan sir. You know, there's this, uh, I'll tell you about a very interesting incident that happened. Mm -hmm. My Chokhir Bali released in uh, 2003. In November, uh, in yeah, and it was also premiered in Mumbai in one of the theaters uh, in Andheri West. And at that point of time, I had gone out there, and uh, after the after the premiere, Karan sir was there, and I met Karan sir. Yeah, that was around eighteen years. Uh, now it's almost twenty years ago, actually, exactly. Twenty years. So actually, uh, uh, what happened was that after that, I went up to him in the. In the film, I had longer hair and I was bearded. But during the uh, during the premiere, I was clean shaven. I had shorter hair because I was shooting for another film. And I went up to him and I asked about the film. And he spoke to me about the film, highs and the lows, what he liked about the film. And then I asked him, sir, what, how, what do you have to say about my portrait? And he said, were you in the film? I said, I played that character. And he said, oh my God, you were bearded and you had longer hair. And Anuj, I realized that he was speaking to me for the last five minutes five minutes as a normal uh, viewer. He didn't recognize me as an actor. So 
his humanity was still there at that point of time. And then that night I prayed to God or the universe. I said that I hope someday I get to work with him. He's such a lovely human being. And believe me, every being a nice human being precedes everything. If the person is not a good human being, then the riches, the success, the names, the achievements, they make they mean nothing. So he was a he is a lovely person. So I prayed to the universe that I get to work with. And 18 years later, I was sitting right across him yeah. and he's offered me a job. Then I realized the universe listens to your prayers. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's how it happened. I didn't plan for it. Now, going forward, I, uh, I, I still don't plan for my future. But yes, I want to be in films where primarily I can entertain my audience. I want to engage after I entertain, oh. not the other way around. I have to entertain them and engage them with what I want to say. And I want to be in films that do the same. Because today, it's also called show business for a reason. There's a business aspect of it. I need to bring the viewers to the theatres. And if they don't come to the theatres, all my messages, all my fun, fun, all high fundas and everything, they go to waste. So yes, I want to be in entertaining films, but also sensibly entertaining, not something that is regressive, not right. something which is toxic. Mm. Mm. And I guess also, as I mentioned as well, again, the whole authentic Bengali uh, voice as well, is that something you really would like to to champion and bring forth to? I mean, if we look at even in, in, in this show that uh, that Jubilee, for example, yeah. that was amazing in that. So is that something which also you'll be quite passionate about as well in, in, in presenting? I would be extremely passionate about telling my story from my uh, my stories from my region yes but it all depends on the director because it's a director's medium ultimately at the end of the day it's what he's asking me to do and i can't exceed my brief i need to follow his his vision his directions that's what i need to do so yes i would really we have some wonderful stories we have some fantastic authors here we have our stories as well but so does Tamil, so does Malayalam, so does Punjab, so does uh, Maharashtra. So I think the lockdown, the best part about the lockdown is that we got to know each other's culture through our films. Hmm. And hmm. now we have a much better understanding. So yes, really, I want to get together to make truly Indian films in the truest sense. We want to make Indian films. Yes, I could be the voice of Bengal, but I also don't want to play Bengalis all my life. Yeah. I also want to play a Bihari. I want to play a UPI. I want to play a Marathi. I want to play a Punjabi. I want to play a Telugu guy. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, that is that requires a lot of hard work, work. But that's the reason why we have become actors. To lead several lives in one lifetime. Yeah, true. And that is really the beauty of acting. And I think you did such a wonderful job in Rocky Rani Ki Prem Kahani. I mean, we all left thinking about Chandon's character a lot. And I think it really left a place in, in my heart specifically. And I personally think that this might actually just be one of the most iconic mem- like m- moments of contemporary Hindi cinema history as well. I've never seen anything so powerful, so nostalgic but yet soul-stirring and relevant ever and I think it's so wonderful and I'm so glad that we saw a piece like this and I'm so glad that you could join me so thank you so much Shota sir for joining me on Film Ishram it's been such a pleasure to have you really thank you so much for taking the time out thank you thank you Anuj it was it was my pleasure truly pleasure thank you so much thank you